Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be making a minimalist ID wallet. So, let's get started. Here are a few examples of the minimalist ID wallet. You can make it with a lanyard to wear around your neck, or with a wristlet strap. If you don't want a strap on there at all, you can put on a split key ring to attach your keys. The ID window will fit a standard size card, and it has a secure snap closure. On the opposite side of the wallet, there's a generous slip pocket. And again, you can put items in here, and it also has a secure snap closure. Then you have a zippered section with a nice size interior. You can put some cash in there. You can put some lipstick or lip balm in there, and it'll actually even fit a small bottle of hand sanitizer. So, let's talk a little bit about the pattern. If you would like to sew along with me, I do have a pattern available. I will put a link in the description below the video as to where you can find the pattern. The pouch measures approximately 5.5 inches wide by 4 inches high. Now, this video tutorial is going to serve as the instructions for constructing the ID wallet, as there are no written instructions within the pattern itself. What you will find inside the pattern is this blue box is a link to the video that you're about to watch. It gives you some general instructions, the materials, and the hardware that you need. Then it will give you all of your pattern pieces. Now, on this piece here, on this pattern piece here, there's a 2-inch registration square. You want to measure that square from side to side and top to bottom. If the square measures 2 inches in each direction after printing, then your pattern has printed out the correct size. And when you measure, you want to measure from the outer black lines. You also want to make sure that you set your printer to print at 100% or actual size. So these here are all of your pattern pieces. And then I'm also providing an SVG file if you'd like to cut out your pieces on the Cricut Maker. Now this SVG file has only been tested on the Cricut Maker. I have not tested it on any other die cutting machines. You'll see a black square in the SVG file and that is also your registration square. So that will be a two by two inch square. You wanna check that square before you cut out your pieces. I'm using 100% cotton quilting fabric for both the exterior and the interior pieces. In addition, I'm using Pellon SF101 as my stabilizer. You want to go ahead and cut out all of your pieces based on the information on each pattern piece. And I have these arrows here which tell you which direction to place the fabric. So the arrow refers to the straight of grain, and that would be along the selvage of the fabric. So parallel to the selvage of the fabric is how you want to place these arrows. Now for the pocket piece, you'll have your fabric, and then you'll also have your piece of interfacing. The interfacing is a little bit smaller than the fabric piece because we want to keep that interfacing out of the seam line on the pocket. All the other interfacing pieces are the same size as the pattern piece. So you'll just go ahead and center that, and then you want to fuse all of your interfacing pieces to the fabric using the manufacturer's instructions. In addition to cutting out your pattern pieces, you have a few additional pieces to cut out. This is for the D-ring. This is the piece that will be the binding for the ID window, and then you have the vinyl for the ID window. Then you'll need to decide if you want to make a wristlet strap or a lanyard strap. For the wristlet strap, you're going to need 3 quarter inch hardware that includes a 3 quarter inch D-ring and a 3 quarter inch swivel clip. For the lanyard, you'll need a 3 quarter inch D-ring and a 1 half inch swivel clip. Or you can also decide that you just want to have a split key ring on here, in which case you would need the split key ring. In addition, you'll need a number three zipper that's seven inches long. You will need two full sets of cam snaps. I actually have more there than I need, but two full sets. Then you need some thread. I'm using some Aurifil 50 weight thread. And you'll need some wonder clips. 
then you'll need some sort of marking tool. I typically like to use a chalk wheel, but on the videos I like to use a friction pen because it's easier to see the marks. Be very careful if you decide to use one of these. The ink will disappear with heat, but it will come back with cold. So be very careful where you use these pens. Start with the piece that you cut out for your binding strip for the ID window. You want to take that piece, fold it in half with the long raw edges together, and press it. Once you're done with that pressing, you're going to open it up, and you want to fold each long edge into that middle crease, just like this. And now the long edges are meeting in the middle there where that center crease is, and you want to press again. And then you'll fold everything over together and press one more time. And now those two folded edges will be meeting right here on the top. Once you have that all pressed, you're going to fold it in half. And then you want to cut it in half. Then you'll take the vinyl piece that you cut out for the ID window and you want to put this binding right along those longer edges here. You want to make sure that the piece of vinyl butts right up with this folded edge right here and then put in a couple of wonder clips to hold it in place. And once you have all of that clipped into place, we're going to sew one eighth of an inch away from each edge right along here. I'm sewing on a Juki DDL 8000A and I have my hinged zipper foot on here. This foot is made by Juki and it's a nice narrow foot. I'm going to use the edge of this foot right here to ride along the edge of my binding as I sew along. You do want a back stitch. And then you'll go ahead and sew along the other side of the binding exactly the same way. After the binding is sewn to the vinyl, go ahead and trim that binding even with the vinyl. Next, take the piece for the exterior body center panel and you want to mark one half inch up from the bottom edge of that panel. have the mark right here and then you want to take the ID window you want to place it right on that line. You also want to make sure that you have even spacing between the top edge here and the binding. So you can just take your ruler and go ahead and measure that. After everything is in place go ahead and clip the ID window to the exterior panel. Now that this is clipped, we're going to sew straight across the bottom here to secure the ID window to the panel. And we'll do that exactly the same way that we did when we sewed the binding to the vinyl. Now sew straight across this binding here and back stitch at both ends. Now you want to take your left and right exterior panels and we're going to clip them to each side of that center panel. You can clip both at the same time right now. And then after they're clipped in place, we're going to sew these on with a one quarter inch seam. So 
So there's that clipped into place. Then take your exterior pocket. You want to fold it in half. Try and keep your edges all nice and even. And then you want to press it. After you've pressed it, you'll top stitch right along this folded edge. Then you'll take the exterior body piece that you're going to put the exterior pocket on and you'll line it all up, make sure that all of your edges are even, make sure that you have even spacing between this folded edge here and the top of the pocket, and then you'll clip it all in place, and you want to baste all the way around the pocket here. Then you want to take the two flat pieces, one of them has the interfacing on it, and one of them does not. You'll put those pieces right sides together, Make sure that all your edges are even and you'll clip all the way around and then we're going to sew around this flap with a one quarter inch seam. So let's go over to the machine right now and sew all those pieces together. Here's the piece with the ID window and we're just going to sew those side panels on with a one quarter inch seam. And do back stitch at both ends. After you're done sewing that side seam, you want to take that panel and press it open. Then you'll put it back underneath your presser foot, and we want to top stitch right along this folded edge right here. And now that we have this side finished, you can go ahead and sew the quarter inch seam on this side, press everything open, and then do the top stitching. Now I'm going to top stitch across the top of the exterior pocket. Now I'm going to base the pocket to the exterior panel one eighth of an inch away from the edge and do back stitch at each end. Now sew the two sides of the flap closure together with right sides together with a one quarter inch seam. Now you want to take that flap and clip in on the curves. You don't want to cut through your stitching, so be very careful. But you only need to clip around these curves here on both sides. Once you've done your clipping, you want to iron one side of the seam open. I like to take a point turner. I get right in between the seam and I slide it down and then I can fold that seam over. And then I'm just going to press it open. makes it much easier to iron it open if you use that point turner. When you're done ironing, you want to turn this right side out. After the flap is turned right side out, you want to roll those seams so that the seam is sitting right at the top there. You can take your point turner and push everything out. You can take the rounded end of this point turner. This is from Clover and that rounded end on the point turner is very nice for turning out those corners. Once this is turned out nicely, go ahead and give the flap a nice pressing. After the flap is pressed, we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Take the exterior piece that has the pocket on it and we want to measure in one half inch from each edge and put a mark there.
then we'll go ahead and top stitch that flap. And after it's top stitched, you want to place the flap in between those marks. You'll clip it in place and then we'll baste right across the top here. Now I'll do the top stitching around the flap one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now based on the flap, just make sure that your flap is within the half inch marks that we made before. And just baste it on about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now you should have both of your exterior panels sewn together. So we have the ID panel and then we have the panel with the exterior pocket and flap. And now we're ready to put on the cam snaps. So for this one here, I just like to try and find the center. So I'll take my ruler. I want to mark about one quarter of an inch up from this edge right here and put a mark right in the center there for the placement of the cam snap. So right about here. And then on the flap side, we want to measure about a half inch up from this flap right here and again, put a mark right in the center. You can really put the marks wherever you want, put the snaps wherever you want. Maybe I'll go up a little bit higher than half an inch. So this will be the mark for the cam snap. Now I do have a video on how to install cam snaps. I'll link to that video. So I won't go into too much detail here about putting on the cam snaps. If you don't want to use cam snaps, you can use any other kind of snap of your choice, so you can use a piece of Velcro, it's totally up to you. I'm going to poke a hole straight through the ID window here. I'll put in the first side of the snap. Make sure everything is properly seated and then you can squeeze. And then you can just check and make sure that that little prong is spread out. Again, make sure everything is properly seated and then squeeze. So we have that one done. Now for this one here, we don't want to poke through the entire piece. So first I'll poke through the flap, just like this. And then I'm going to take my pen and where that hole is, just going to mark with the pen. And my mark is right here. It's going to be hard for you to see because it's black on black, but it's right there. And now I'm just going to poke through just the pocket section. And then I can go ahead and install the snaps. And here they are completed. Now we can work on preparing our zipper. The zipper is going to sit within the area of the flap right here. So from edge to edge. And the measurement there is five inches. So our zipper needs to be five inches long. But I like to make mine just a little bit shy of five inches. So I'm going to make it four and seven eighths inches. Now we need to measure the four and seven eighths inches and you want to find your zipper stop right here. And we're going to measure up from the bottom of the zipper stop. So I'll just take my ruler and place the four and seven eighths inch mark right at the bottom of that zipper stop and then I'm going to draw a line 
on each side of the zipper tape. And now I want to measure down from this line here, and I want that measurement that I measured down to be the width of the zipper tape. So my zipper tape is 3 8 of an inch. So I'm going to measure down 3 8 of an inch from each one of these black lines. And it doesn't have to be a big mark, just a tiny little mark like that. And do that on both sides. Now, take the zipper and pull the zipper pull down past those marks. And then you want to take the zipper tape and on the solid black line right here, you want to fold back just like this. And then we're going to take a needle and thread and you want to make just a little stitch where that mark is. So it's just a little basting stitch in there. And I like to go in maybe two times. And you'll do this on each side. And what that's going to do is it's going to help you take this end of the zipper tape and fold it up to that line and it'll stay right in place there. And at this point now, you can even go ahead and cut off that tail. So I'm going to cut off the thread here, and then I'll trim the tail even with this edge right here. So even with the edge of the zipper. And it's not gonna come out at this point. And then you'll do exactly the same thing on the other side. And then you just check and make sure that both sides of the zipper are even. Now we need to clip the zipper in place. And I like to have my zipper pull opening on this end of the ID window. So I will place it right here in between the two. But I actually want to clip my zipper to the pocket first because this zipper needs to be sitting right within that pocket. So I'll flip it over this way. And now, I want to take the end of the zipper where the zipper teeth are. And that's going to be even with the end of the pocket, and I'll put a clip in there. And then I'm just going to clip the rest of the length along the top of the pocket. And the zipper stop should be about even with the end of the flap here. And now we can go ahead and baste this on with a one quarter inch seam. After we're done basting that in place, we'll take the ID window and then that is going to be clipped to the opposite side of the zipper. Then we'll baste across the zipper on the ID side of the wallet. So now we'll sew straight across at one quarter of an inch. When you get to where the zipper pull is, stop with your needle down and your foot up and then pull that zipper pull past the foot. I'm just going to hold this in place here so that it doesn't move as I'm sewing past. Now you can take the ID window section and we'll clip the other side of the zipper to the ID window. Make sure that your edges are nice and even, just like this. So clip it across and then we can sew it in place. Now we're ready to sew the other side and I'm just holding the top of the zipper in place. And you do want to back stitch again. and then just continue to sew across. Now take the piece for the D-ring and you want to fold it in half and press. Then open it up and fold each edge towards that center crease and press and then fold the entire piece in half 
and press. Then you want to top stitch 1 8 of an inch from each long edge, and I'm going to do that off camera. After you finish your top stitching, take your D-ring and slip it onto the D-ring tab, and then just fold it in half like this. And then you want to take the wallet, and I like the top edge of the tab to be about even with the top edge of the binding on the ID window. And then you can decide how much tab you want showing. I left a generous amount here, but I like mine to be a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to place it a little bit past the edge here. And then I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and just base this 1 8 of an inch away from the edge here. And I will do that off camera as well. I have the D-ring basted in place, and now I'm just going to trim the edge of that tab even with the edge of that exterior piece there. Go ahead and get your two lining pieces, and we're going to base these pieces to the opposite side of the zipper. So we'll fold it up this way, and you want to take one of the lining pieces and just clip it from edge to edge. Make sure that all of your edges are even. Now, when I drafted this pattern, I drafted it so that the lining is slightly smaller than the exterior, which should make the lining fit into the pouch very nicely. So there's no need for you to do any tapering when you sew this. Once this is clipped in place, you're going to sew right over that previous line of stitching. So it's this stitch, line of stitching right here that we sewed the zipper in with. You'll stitch right over that to stitch in your lining. Then once you're done sewing in the first piece of lining, go ahead and clip the second piece of lining to the other side of the zipper and sew that one in place. I'm sewing the first piece of lining to the other side of the zipper now, and as I said before, we're just going to go over that previous line of stitching. Try and keep all of your edges even. I did open the zipper to start. So as I approach that zipper pull, I'm going to pull it away from the presser foot and then I can finish sewing across. I have the other piece of lining clipped to the opposite side of the zipper and I'm just going to sew straight across again. At this point right now my zipper is completely closed so when I get towards the end I will have to move that zipper pull out of the way. Now that I have both sides of the lining sewn into place, I want to do some top stitching. So to do that, I want to take one side of the lining and I want to move it to the opposite side, just like this. And then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do the top stitching right along this edge here, about one eighth of an inch away from the edge, making sure that I have the exterior on this side plus the two pieces of lining on this side. I don't want to catch the lining in the top stitching right now. So I'll go out to the end here and I'm going to start sewing straight across. Now you will be catching the exterior here and you will also be catching the seam line right here. So that seam allowance. And back stitch. Now that I'm done with the top stitching, I want to top stitch on the opposite side. So I'm going to flip this over this way, and I want to move the lining now to the other side. And I'll flip this over this way. I don't want to top stitch over my flap, so I'm going to open that up and hold that out of the way. So now I'm going to be doing my top stitching right along this edge. It's going to be going through the exterior and through the seam allowance right there but you want to have your linings out of the way. So just go ahead and top stitch just like you did on the other side. Now is a good time to take a look at your presser foot. 
We're going to be sewing the exterior and the linings together. And when we do, the presser foot needs to be able to clear very comfortably this zipper stop right here and this end of the zipper right here. So when I sew this together, I am going to be opening my zipper. And now I just want to look and see where my zipper foot is at one quarter of an inch and you can see I'm going to clear my zipper with no problems so we're good on that end and now I'll line up with my quarter inch mark here and once again I have plenty of clearance to clear that zipper stop so I don't have any worries with my foot if your foot whatever foot you're using is not able to clear both ends of the zipper then you probably need to put in a zipper foot and most machines do come with a zipper foot. Now I want to press the lining pieces away from the zipper. So you'll go ahead and press them very nicely. And you can see that the lining is a little bit shorter than the exterior piece and that's going to help everything fit in very nicely. Now we're ready to pin the lining and the exterior together. So put your lining sides together and then put your exterior sides together. You want to make sure that your zipper is open at this point. If you sew everything together without opening that zipper, you're not going to be happy. Now, I like to start at the edges right here where the exterior and the lining meet each other. And I want those two top edges of the exterior to be meeting each other exactly. So you see how they're lined up right there? Once I have them lined up nicely, I'll take a pin and I'll put a pin close to that seam line right there just to hold everything in place. Then I do the same thing on the other side. You want your zipper up this way so the zipper teeth are pointing towards the lining and then you're going to match up the top edges of the exterior just like this and again I'll put a pin on the lining side to hold everything together then I'm simply going to use my wonder clips to clip around the rest of the wallet and you'll do the clips on both the exterior and the lining side and then once we have it all clipped we can sew everything together with a one quarter inch seam. Now you want to leave yourself a nice opening here so I usually will stop here and start here. So I'll start here, sew around and then stop right around there to give myself a nice size opening. And that's so that we can turn the wallet right side out. Now I have everything clipped together and we're ready to sew. We're ready to sew everything together and once again you want to make absolutely sure that your presser foot is going to clear both ends of that zipper. And backstitch at the beginning and the end. Always remove your pins before you get to them. Before you turn the piece right side out, you want to go ahead and clip all of your curves. Make sure that you don't clip through your stitches. Once again, we want to iron everything open. I actually like to turn this open section down about a quarter of an inch. I'll press that. And then once again, I'll just slip my point turner in between the seam there and I'm going to press all the way around. After everything is pressed, you can go ahead and reach inside. I like to get my finger right up into one of the curves, just like that, and then I push it through. This is not going to be very difficult at all to turn right side out. 
Then I do the same thing on the, on the other side. I get my fingers right where that curve is and I push. And then you'll pull everything through that lining right there. And once it's mostly turned out, I reach in with my fingers and I push out those curves. And then you can take your point turner and do the same thing. Just fine tune it a little bit. And again, you can take that rounded end and get that in there to work those curves. And then I take my lining and I get my thumb in there and push it. Same thing here. Then you want to go ahead and close up that opening. Put a few clips in here. Then you want to sew very close to the end of the fabric to close up that opening. And I'm going to do that off camera. Now that I've sewed up that opening in the lining, I just want to press it really well on both sides. And then I can start pushing it down into the pouch. And then I'll take my point turner and I'll really push it down there nicely. Now for the zippers, I like to get my point turner up under the zipper just like this and I push it. You can push out the side and you can push up on the zipper. Then after I have everything completed, I just like to give it one last little pressing. You want to do this from the side that has the exterior pocket, not the side that has the ID window. The ID window may seem up a little bit, but that's okay. That will go away. Now you're ready to either make the wristlet strap or the lanyard. They're both done exactly the same way. The only difference is that the wristlet strap is shorter and wider than the lanyard. So you'll take the piece and fold it in half and press. Then you'll open it up and you'll fold both long edges in towards that middle crease and press. And then you'll take the entire piece and fold it in half again and press. Now, you want to take the swivel clip and place it on the end of either the wrist strap or the lanyard. And then you want to open up both ends and you're going to clip them together, make sure that they're not twisted at all, and you'll sew across this seam here with a one quarter inch seam. So I have some clips here, and now you can just go ahead and sew across with a one quarter or one half inch seam. It's up to you. And I'm going to do that off camera. I have the two ends sewed together now, and now I'm going to fold everything back into place. And I should have a ring now with the clip on it. And I'll take a few wonder clips just to hold everything in place here. And after I have everything clipped, I'm going to top stitch along both edges. So I will top stitch one eighth of an inch from each edge all the way around. You'll have to move this clip as you're sewing. Here is your wristlet strap before you do your top stitching. Everything's clipped together. I have the clip here and I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch along both outer edges. So now I'll top stitch around the strap and I am starting where I sewed the two ends together. The clip is right here and you can back stitch. And just go completely around the circle, move the clip as you need to. And when I get back to where I started, I'll just stitch a few stitches over those original stitches and back stitch. 
Now go ahead and top stitch over the opposite side. Now that I've top stitched on both sides of the strap, I moved my clip below where the seam is where I joined the two ends together. And I'm just going to sew across that seam a couple of times to hold the end of the strap together and the clip in place. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and I do hope that you'll give the pattern a try. I want to thank everyone who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as one, so please like and subscribe.